All right. This is a response to addicted to minis. We are not having a feud. We're just exchanging coin videos. All right. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. This is a three pence, I believe. 1890. I believe this is sterling. This one is probably 50%, but it is a sixpence from 1922. Uh, if I remember correctly, they changed from sterling to 50% after 1919. New Zealand half crown. You see, five dollars. Now, my coin dealer is 0.2273. He sells this kind of stuff at melt, always. So he figures out how much silver is in each coin. Sometimes he writes whether it's sterling or not, which the 17 should be. It's a Canadian coin, five cents. Now, when you get to stuff like this, about a bullet, it's 90% silver. It's a 62. I was looking up these, trying to find some details about these. This is the same amount of silver as our half dollar has. So, and it's um, 90%. So, today, this, if I went to buy this one at my coin dealer, and it'd probably be about 10 bucks. Well, maybe not 10 because melt's not that high on this. It'd probably be eight eight seventy five or something, somewhere in that general vicinity now some of these coins i did get at decent prices 350 for this which it's total weight it's point one is that right yeah point one eight one eight or maybe it's supposed to be zero eight one of the two doesn't matter to me because i got this pretty cheap 350 Someone had it for 10, but that person didn't want to sell it. My coin dealer always says when they price stuff way too high, this one's a sterling one, older, 1916. You'll be able to see the date. With the older King George. It's a florin, Great Britain. Now, these Mexican coins like this, this one, when I bought it, it's 1075. This is a 720 silver, and it's that's the total weight. This was priced when I bought it at melt, pretty much. So, and it's pretty much on you know AU coin, probably. Don't really see any wear and tear. Now, you get in the Canadian ones, this is 0.3750. It's 50% silver. It's a big coin. Bigger than, you know, bigger than our half dollar is. This one's a British Columbia one, which is a special one. By this time, 1971, they were, really weren't putting them in silver, but this one is because it was commemorative. Now, Australia, this sixpence, hmm. Apparently it's 0 0.0453 ounces. One shilling, it's 50%. Buck 60 when I bought it. Younger King George. And it is in 1942. As you can see. Canadian dime, 1945, 80%. $1.10. Um, the right, whoever wrote this, it looks like chicken scratch. I know that a roll of these 80% ones equals 3 ounces, so that's how you do the math on that. 50 of them is 3 ounces silver, roughly. Another Canadian one that's 50%, it's a $72. They went away from silver on these not too long after this, but this is 50%. Big coin, though. I think it was, I don't, I don't know, that might even be a commemorative one of some sort. Six pence. 
That was two dollars. It's fifty percent. Whoa. Oh. We'll look at this closer. It's a sixpence. Here, nineteen forty-one. Uh, a shilling coin from nineteen seventeen. This is sterling. I like the back on these. 1917, one shilling. Here's a half crown from 1922. It's 50%. The design on these is really cool. 1922. It is 0.2273 ounces. And this is an Australian. It's 80% silver. It's a... Uh, but I think the last year they actually made these in silver. And I think the government wanted everybody to turn them in, but they were real popular because Queen Elizabeth's real popular, so a bunch of people kept them and didn't turn them in. Now this one had a slight premium. It was nine bucks, but it's barely circulated. And it's the last year of 50% silver, from what I understand. 46. Now, this is a one foreign coin, and it's was featured in my video last night. It's got the Parliament building. It's 0 0.3363 ounces, and that's how it was priced. Now, we've got a few other coins here. These couple more of the big Mexican coins, which when I bought these. We're pretty close to the price that the online people wanted. Maybe a little higher, but not much. And because it's, you know, foreign silver, it, it's not real expensive. Got two of them. One was a 78 and the other is a 79. And that other one I had down here somewhere. I'll have to dig a little. Is a 78 as well. As, so I want the 77 one to complete the set. There's only three years of them. This one is 720 silver, like these are. 720%, you know, 0.72%. And it's about near, just a little bit over half an ounce of silver. I got it from Map Mix. So it wasn't particularly cheap. Now these, spot price of silver at the time... It's 25 bucks. And he figured out how much each one was. The total amount of silver in the bag. So these were priced at melt. There's a couple 20 something, 32 in here. And I think these other ones, 24s. And this one's a little, might be. Older, if I, can, I, I ain't worried about it. We'll just move on real quick to the last few coins I got on my de desk here for this video. Anyway, this one isn't silver, but it's pretty neat. I quite like that. And then I got a couple Balboas 61s, a half Balboa and a quarter Balboa that are pretty well uncirculated. I mean, it's AU at the worst. It does have a scratch on it, so it probably go AU. Let's just say AU for the 12 and a half grains, 90%. Now, this one was a little more, but all in all, most of these silver coins, and then all of these silver coins, including this 1930 Balboa, the price that melt. And what else is in here is. Uh, Philippines wartime coins, a couple Cuban coins, and there's the other part of the Balboa. Seemed to me he said that the 1930 Balboa was a, addicted to minis, that is, was a better year, better date, lower minage. Well, if it was, I think I did pretty well getting it for Melp. That's pretty much my video in response to Addicted to Minis, and it's not a feud, we're just having fun.